But this uh, this draft fell in a way where I get to draft the player that I'm really wanting to draft right now. How dare you call Alexander Madison a reach in the middle of the fourth round? And sitting there is Dalton Kincaid, and I will never, <laughs> I will never do that. I don't draft rookie tight ends. It's against who I am. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, August 1st, the Fantasy Footballers. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Deucers in the building as well. And here we are, it's August. <laughs> it's time. <sighs> Let's go. You gentlemen excited for what is to come? The Hall of Fame game. Very much so. <laughs> I don't care. I will. Uh, I think I'll watch it. I guess. I mean, I'll probably tune in and then be like, ah, this is not very, it's not very <laughs> oh, good. Oh, that's what this thing yeah. is. Yeah, now I remember. <laughs> they tricked me again. Uh, we're into five shows a week. We'll be here with you every single day, and that will go through the end of the football season. So we uh, we kick it off today. We have a mock draft show on today's episode. Yes, yeah, or so, a mock draft on today's episode. Yeah, and to the to the person who recently uh, messaged or on Twitter, they said, "Hey, are you guys going to do any more mock draft shows?" Yeah, thank you, Mike. We are. We're answering the bell. A uh, couple reminders here at the top. We have a lot of news to talk about as well. Some craziness took place over the weekend. But first, a reminder: the Ultimate Draft Kit available right now. UltimateDraftKit dot com. Your drafts are coming. Be prepared. Be ready to win. Set the foundation for your team at the draft with the Ultimate Draft Kit. Uh, you don't win your league at the draft, but you uh, you set yourself up for a lot of success. You can lose it at the draft. Right. <laughs> you yeah. can make right. a lot of mistakes. And the nice thing is, I know a lot of people, they'll grab the UDK the, the morning of the draft, and that, that can work. But right now, on August 1st, if we got a couple weeks, there's so much information in there so much good toilet time that you can you can have to yourself for this month. Let's make August great. Agreed. So you can check that out, ultimatedraftkit.com. When you do draft, you can plug your team in or import your team, get the draft analyzer to give you a grade, let you know uh, where to take your team once the season begins. You can find us on X. Oh, gosh. <laughs> X marks the spot. I, ha I have to say it, right? Yeah, it is. It's Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the FF Ballers. And don't mistake my sigh for caring. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter in any way, shape, and form other than the annoyance of, like, I've got a good nine years now of saying, follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Really, this impacts my routines. It does. Um, but, uh, yeah, well, X, X going to give it to you yeah. over there. <laughs> going to give you our... Our posts. Our posts, yeah. Uh, at the FF Ballers, Jason's at Jason FFL. You can follow Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway, and we're on Instagram as well. You can watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell. All right, let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Well, the big news from the weekend was the Jonathan Taylor escapades. Oh, man. And um, let's catch you up here and then tell you what happened over the weekend. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is, is heading into the final year of his rookie contract. Jonathan Taylor said previously in the offseason he's under contract. He put pen to paper. He's going to play. He proceeded to uh, fire that agent, hire a new agent. All of this running back situation has proliferated throughout the league where there have uh, JK Dobbins uh was very or is very upset. Uh, Josh Jacobs is not in training camp being on the franchise. Saquon just barely uh went from upset to content and uh and so we have 
this situation where now Jonathan Taylor's not happy with his contract. And so um, that's where we stood. Uh, there was reports of Jonathan Taylor meeting with Jim Irsay, uh, the magnificent owner of the Indianapolis Colts. Tremendous communicator. You know, uh, just really easy to get along with. Makes uh, Definitely not in his own world. And so there was reports of him meeting with Jonathan Taylor for over an hour at training camp. Jonathan Taylor had been on the PUP and currently is. After that meeting, it became public that he had requested a trade days before. Then Jim Irsay came out and said, we're never trading him. Not yeah. even in October, we'll never trade him. Then, the next chapter, the Colts are considering placing Jonathan Taylor on the non-football injury list as a bit of gamesmanship, it seems. Because if he's on that list, due to an injury suffered away from training camp and the team, his contract will not toll. They could deny him any amount of money they want, and he would be under the team's control for another year. They're really taking good care of him, you know? Yeah. Then he came out and said, and this is from his official Twitter account. Number, X account. Uh, sorry, you, X account. <laughs> uh, number one, never had back pain. Number two, never reported back pain. Not sure who the sources are, but find new ones. Well, he's saying he's fine. And here we are. And if you have Jonathan Taylor in your leagues, you should be freaked out because uh, there are pretty bad outcomes in play here for Jonathan Taylor. Now, the best outcome, is it a trade? Is it just, hey, we're actually fine with each other because I threw some incentives in your deal and, and I'll let you go next year? I mean, because this is the final year of his rookie deal, but he could be franchised. He they could, could play the Saquon card, but Josh I, Jacobs card. I'm curious. Uh, I mean, number one, I'll, I'll start with this because Jonathan Taylor, you know, he said he's good with his contract. Then the guy got really hurt last year and, I mean, is still dealing with some stuff for the ankle. And I think he's realizing, oh, crap, what if I get hurt again and I can't get a contract? So I, I think he's realizing the situation that he's really in, which is it's an unfortunate situation to be in. I think he's going to play. I think he will be on the Colts, and we, we've kind of discussed Jonathan Taylor of the. he's an incredible running back. He's up against it with a rookie and a mobile uh, quarterback at, who will be at the helm for the Colts, so he might be a little bit uh, overpriced for his ADP. Still think he'll be, he'll be really good for fantasy football, but maybe a little bit drafted a little too high. I'm wondering if he's doing all this right now then plays out the season. This is like the, well, he's hoping to get a contract extension, but this could be the, if you are thinking about franchising me after this year, mm -hmm. I'm going to raise hell. So do not do this. I'm doing this right now. I'm letting you know <laughs> a year in advance. Do not franchise me. Let me, it, and I don't know if that will work or I don't even know if that's the case, but that that's what it seems like to me trying to be a psychologist and a detective. I don't think you want to play chicken with Jimmy or say like I like <laughs> no he's no, the he, one that's like he will crash he will crash yes. he will go straight he'll go he'll eat the chicken raw yeah, absolutely <laughs> you know he's he's not he not to be logical. trifled with yes Here, here's what I'll say uh I think it's like a lot like the Josh Jacobs and uh Raider situation in so fact is both parties are responsible for their circumstance I don't think it's all Josh Jacobs' fault. I don't think it's all the Raiders' fault. I don't think it's all Jonathan Taylor's fault. I don't think it's all Jim Irsay's fault. Uh, to his credit, he this was the guy who paid Andrew Luck his full $24 million after he suddenly retired. Didn't hold that money back, but he also doesn't want to be played chick. He doesn't want to be pushed up against the wall like this, and so you're you're having these butting heads. And historically, the, the Colts and running backs, they've... They don't pay them. They don't pay them, yeah. And they, they've offered no contract, to be clear. That's another thing that came out publicly. They have made zero contract offers of any kind to Jonathan Taylor. And so for whatever reason, and obviously as a new agent with a different uh, game plan, right? Because that's how a lot of these yeah. situations are. It's a gamesmanship to get... It's posturing. Yeah, you want to posture. It's, you know, he requested a trade three or four days early. Then we bring it public after this meeting. So a lot of that, you know... I don't think this NFI thing would hold up if he's really not hurt. Yeah, it does, so it, it's more another posturing publicity move to make Jonathan Taylor look bad. So 
we don't know where Jonathan Taylor is playing. And, and what's crazy to me is, and I don't know if you guys have spent the time thinking about it. If they trade Jonathan Taylor or he's held out for a part of the season, where are we in that backfield in Indianapolis? Well, we have another update to that as Zach Moss, who would they had traded for it last year. They acquired him from the Buffalo Bills, sending Naeem Hines over there. He would have presumed to be the starter. It should, uh, should Jonathan Taylor miss any amount of time. Well, he broke his forearm, so he is expected to miss, you know, about six weeks. I mean, as long as it's just a clean break, you miss the time and you come back. But that's still, I mean, now we're right up against the season for a and a guy who's now going to miss all of training camp, all of preseason, and you're looking at the the roster behind those guys. Deion you know, Jackson, Deion Jackson, who got some play last year, can catch the ball a little bit. Evan Hull, Evan was, Hull is currently listed behind Zach Moss as the third running back. Yeah, and, and Evan Hull has a pass-catching profile. He's a rookie. Um, Jake uh, Funk in the house. <laughs> is Jake Funk there? Jake Funk is there. Oh, man. We want the funk. But it's, I don't know uh, if we want the funk, no, man. No. It is. It, Evan Hull was a fifth-rounder this year. It's, it's not good. Losing Zach Moss is, like, if you were just talking posturing, this is a – something that went right for Jonathan Taylor, at least to, to maybe flex some Are leverage. Are we sure that Jonathan Taylor was not involved in the accident <laughs> with Zach Moss? Yeah. Oh, yes, was... we are of course sure. Because if if Jonathan Taylor missed time, he would want Zach Moss on the field. Oh. He would want him out oh. there going, do you oh. see what you got? Jason, the guy just broke his arm. Oh, look, I'm so sorry about that. But this is good news for the Colts is what oh, I'm saying. Oh, my gosh. That's all my point was. No, it's we just, got the yeah. point. Because Zach Moss is bad at football. Oh. No, yeah, but yeah, you're saying got... he's better with a broken arm. He's better off the field. It's just, you know, it's oh addition by gosh. subtraction. What is this? I don't know. Uh, when the news came and it was like, oh, he broke his arm. At like, oh, Jason he's still FFL. At Jason FFL. Um, I'm so sorry, Mr. Moss. Here is why the Seahawks always draft running backs every single year. Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet both dealing with injuries. Kenneth Walker is dealing with the Darn. first groin injury of the year. Mm. Groinindex.com, it we, is updated. It's up to date? Oh, it's always up to date, Mike. So they're waiting on that. And then Zach Charbonnet. <laughs> it's just him. Yeah. It's just Kenneth Walker on groinindex.com. Yeah. Uh, Zach Charbonnet is dealing with a shoulder injury. He's out indefinitely. Here is Pete Carroll's direct quote about the rookie. We'll take some time to figure it out. It just kind of crept up on him, really. He didn't get hit or anything. Just all of a sudden, he started feeling something. So we're checking him out. Hmm. And being really cautious. I don't love that. No, neither of these injuries, this is not great. Yeah, you don't like these soft tissue issues that linger, especially, uh, and this has been brought up this offseason as to why they added Zach Charbonnet. So many downs last year for this team. It was DJ Dallas, and it was Travis Homer, and you went into the season with a sports hernia issue for Kenneth Walker, and then he was out with an ankle injury, and here we are with a groin injury. This is why they draft a new one every year. And 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 uh, they drafted a few like Kenny, McIntosh, Kenny, right? Yeah, Kenny McIntosh is there. I would I would assume that DJ Dallas is now the the acting one, but Kenny McIntosh is he was an he was an interesting prospect and now he's going to get plenty of time to to he's show been running, who he is. Yeah, he's been running with the ones, looks really good. Yeah, I mean, I, I he he was more of a pass catching back in college. McIntosh was, so I don't know how that uh, you know fits here um, as a replacement for either Walker or Charbonnet. But the Charbonnet news to me is something that whenever you use the word indefinitely, it yeah. makes me hold my. It's like, don't say that. Just say we're not sure yet. Don't scare me like that. So, do you like Kenny McIntosh, or are you more of a Tank Dell man? Uh. Tank Dell. Okay. Yeah, that was I was I was going really back in time there, but nobody really picked up on that. No. You don't remember those old commercials? The no. Mac versus Dell commercials that oh, we had for years yes. and years okay. and years. Okay. Go ahead. You have the crick no, 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 no. I don't have it. I I mean what we'll go. Boston. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's what else all there. you have? I, I didn't I Thank didn't realize you, you no, were do going, another one. I didn't know you were going Dell. I was trying to figure out my Kenny Mac. That's what the commercials were, right? Yes. Yes. Like like for years. Oh no, 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 no. It was Mac versus PC. It wasn't Adele. No, that oh, was okay. dude. You're getting Adele. Hold on, are there any buttons I can push for my own <laughs> self? Here? I need a time machine. 
I well, thought, see, the joke's not funny then. It, I mean, it wasn't funny anyways. I wasn't following it. I thought it was a – you were it talking about Mac how big. versus PC. Because yeah. Kenny McIntosh was like – he's six foot, 204. Jason just answered. Yes. He just answered for you. like well, wide I mean, receiver versus running you're back. You're trying yeah. to pick up your friend here. Yeah. Thanks. It's a computer joke. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Oh, man. It was uh, bad. <laughs> Dalvin Cook didn't sign. Yet. I don't know if he does. Um, was in New York, crowd chanting his name, meet and greet, watched a practice, hung out, had all the interviews. hard knocks film crew following him around for the day. So he'll he'll be on the show. You think Seattle's going to give him a call now? Seattle? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, New England? That was a team that's going to meet with him as well. I still think he wants to play in Miami. I really do. I think that's where he want he wants them to come forward and give him a contract. And Mike McDaniel spent about two minutes too long dancing around the question of whether Dalvin Cook would be added to the team. It's like we love our running back room. It's it's really good, but Dalvin Cook's really great. But um 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 um, I think he, I think that's where Dalvin wants to play. But uh, we don't have a contract yet. We also don't have a contract for Ezekiel Elliott, who met with the Patriots. Another running back. It seems inevitable that Ramondre will have a running mate at some point. Yes. It's All right. It's just how high of a status of a player. Yeah. Can we, do we have like a sad song oh, here man. somewhere? Do you Aww. have anything back there, Al? Here we go. I mean, I can a fireball burn too bright yes it can a, a, a star can supernova and then turn into a black hole i mean it didn't even get to yeah this was not a soup this just went into the water it illuminated yeah. nothing tim patrick hey tim patrick is uh he left practice feared to be an achilles injury he, he, he's not gonna play yeah we, we don't have the official confirmation as of right now but an achilles injury they Usually, no, pre pretty quick if if it is actually torn. It was non-contact. The video's bad. Yeah, it's. I mean, this is the second year in a row now for Tim Patrick for a training camp preseason leg injury. The guy was already a bit older. It this, it's real unfortunate. Yeah, it it, it stinks for him. It stinks for the organization. He signed a three-year, very large contract, and he's probably this is never, year two of it, right? Yes, he's yeah. probably never gonna play a single snap on that contract but I'm, I'm happy he got the money uh because he you know he was a a lower drafted older uh player so yeah real shame but yep, we've updated the udk yep that was updated immediately my i think greg dulcich um is one of the players that is yeah going to get the biggest bump uh in, in this situation and it's not good for russell wilson no, and, and like Marvin Mims is just coming back into training camp. It's going to be hard to trust him early in the season. Kenny, uh, KJ Hamler. Yeah, they're actually, they're waving him. He has. Oh, a, he was waved. Yes. He has a non football I, injury designation, a heart issue. Yeah, I don't. Uh, pericardi pericarditis. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to try it. Nailed it. Hey, I did, I did my best. But yeah, he's. Tank he's, Dell. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But I'm, it's like. Hamler's unfortunately got his stuff going on, but but they were willing to waive him. Uh, so and, and I mean he hasn't been able to stay on the field regardless. The condition he's suffering with is not considered serious. He he would miss weeks, not months. Um, Sterling Shepard back off of the pup. Hey hey. Uh, there you go. What what if Zeke ended up in New England? What do you think of Zeke in New England? Where would he end up in your rankings? Uh, not very high. I mean, I, I, even if Zeke, would no you matter. look at him like Damian Harris last year, or worse? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a that's a pretty solid comp. No matter what, Ramondre's the number one for the New England Patriots. It's just how annoying is the number two going to be? And Zeke would probably get in there. He'd steal some goal line and things, but the they I think they'd keep Ramondre as the pass catcher over Zeke. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. You can learn more at usaa.com slash insurance you guys ready to mock let's go wait are you ready to mock a lock a ding dong still yes i think that's the first time i've actually hit the drop people have been upset yeah i was about to, i was about to hit my verbal drop mock a lock a ding dong let's go baby <laughs> the fantasy footballers mock draft also known just as speaking 
<laughs> That's my verbal drop, Mike. <laughs> thought you did all the drops. Was, that, that was a verbal drop, too, though. Yeah, but that's fair. <laughs> I was this about was, to hit my own button. <laughs> my verbal drop sounds like this. <laughs> all right. Mock draft. Here we go. The Deucers are involved. They're going to be drafting their own team. One team for Team Deucers. So that would be uh, three guys, one bad team. You guys ready for this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. 12 team half PPR. Draft spots were randomly determined. Uh, I have the number two spot. Mike at five, Jason at 10, and the Deucers are at pick six. So it'll be fun seeing them and Mike battle it out, steal from one another. The uh, the mock draft settings, 12 team half PPR, like I said, one quarterback, two running back, two wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, four bench. Uh, we have had this question, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it to you two. Before we get it going, uh, the question of just like what, what's the utility of mock drafting? What, where do you find the greatest benefits of going through the exercise? Uh, I know these these episodes are obviously very popular, so people want the information of where players are going. But w what about you individually? Uh, for me individually, I I think there's there's two main takeaways. There's places in the draft like am i drafting from early you know the, the near the one two turn am i in the middle of the draft am i at the end of the uh, of the round because it really changes like especially in the first few rounds you're pretty much drafting very close to adp that uh, the the players are all kind of correct in the order and so it gives you good strategy of here's what to do if i'm at this spot but the other thing and and it's all about positions it's all about when to take what position what rounds do I hate the running backs what rounds do I love the wide receivers prepare for what you know is coming earlier and you go oh I, I I'm I love the wide receivers in this area so I, I really want to have running backs early and and you can only find that out by mock drafting all right let's kick this thing off first pick Justin Jefferson which means I will take the layup I'm gonna go Christian McCaffrey I know I could choose anyone in the world but Christian McCaffrey is where I'm going to go. Uh, the running back position, when you when you know you can get guaranteed production, still my favorite position to draft. Uh, but I don't blame anybody going Jefferson at 101. He is a uh, he is guaranteed to sure. make a huge impact on your team as well. So uh, after McCaffrey, Jamar Chase goes 103, then Eckler. So uh, because of the back and forth between wideout and running back, Mike, you are obligated to take a wide receiver. Oh, well, perfect, because I was going to do that anyways. Um, I'm not thinking about Travis Kelsey here. It's with uh, the elite wide receivers still on the board, and it's going to be Cooper Cup for me. Tyreek Hill is perfectly fine there for me, but uh, Cooper Cup, just remember what he was doing. Like Justin Jefferson has all the headlines and everything because Cooper Cup got hurt halfway through the season, but through that point when Cooper Cup was not injured, I mean, he was dominating even Justin Jefferson at that point in a points per game. So Cooper Cup, still great. Matthew Stafford, they're going to run it back at least one more time. So I still have full confidence that Cooper Cup is that guy. Yeah, I mean, when, you, when you're getting headlines right now at a training camp about the performance of, uh, you know, Demarcus Robinson earning snaps in the offense and Tutu Atwell and uh, Puka Nakua and – yeah, that just means Cooper Cubs going to get 100,000 targets. He's locked in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he he might hit 200 targets, like legitimately. I mean, I again, this is a fragile situation, I believe, in Los Angeles because you have a bad O-line and you have a quarterback that's got chronic injury problems. Sure. But as of now, there's no reason Cooper Cup couldn't be the best pick in this draft at 105. The Deucers. Who is going to be uh, officially making picks over there? I know you're working together with your uh, – you're all one mind. Yeah, Kyle gets the final say, but I'll be announcing our picks for okay. us. Okay. Well, 106, Cooper Cub just went. What's the pick going to be? And with pick 106, oh, oh, this is what? the Deucer Select, Tyreek Hill. Oh, mercy. <laughs> How many more picks do they have? <laughs> That's a first-round thing, I think. What is – we give you a team, and this is what happens? That's exactly what happens. They Good receive Lord. feedback from YouTube and from the listeners that make them 
puffed up. Puffed up. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, we love the Deucers. Stop oh. empowering the Deucers. They Vote saw- for hashtag Team Deucers on socials. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness <laughs> gracious. Oh, no. This is this is getting ugly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. What? Okay, I didn't, I didn't realize this was going to happen. Uh, Tyreek Hill is the pick, huh? Yeah, this, it's good. I like it. Travis Kelsey went next. <laughs> Saquon, Bijan, Jason. Oh, Jason, you almost got Bijan. I would have taken him had he been there at one ten. I, I, you know, I've spent most of this offseason bypassing Bijan because he's so high. He's being drafted, you know, at a ceiling. Like you, you can't be much better than the running back four. Um, yeah, but have you seen the videos yeah. of of him in one on one drills against linebackers hitting him with like triple and quadruple moves and then <laughs> shocking shocking the linebackers in 1v1s can't keep up yeah the nice thing though is that's who he's going to be matched up against in the nfl game and so it's going to be so beautiful uh that being said right now i would like to get nick chubb i believe he will come back to me based on adp so i'm going to play the adp game here being oh. near the turn and i'm going stefan Diggs. i don't like that all right, Diggs, Lamb, and Mahomes Make round out the first round. Oh, Keep man. the suspense. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. All right, Diggs, C.D. Lamb, Patrick Mahomes round out the first round. Then Johnny Taylor still going at 201 there, which, look, he was the RB4 off the board. I think he goes RB5 here. Derrick Henry, second-round pick. Back to Jason, played the ADP game, won the ADP game. I will select Nick Chubb. <sighs> which uh, would not have been the case had you gone Chubb at 110 and you would not have ended up with Stephon Diggs. A run of wideouts after Nick Chubb, uh, Garrett Wilson, A.J. Brown, Jalen Waddell. Uh, is that surprising, Garrett Wilson going ahead of A.J. Brown to you? Uh, a little bit, but I get it. The, the All the – all the messaging, oh, I guess he has a, a low ankle sprain now. But before that, we were getting just nonstop highlights out of uh, Jets camp. The Jets' publicity uh, team is going to drive ADPs to an unhealthy place. They're mm-hmm. working overtime over there, which they should. Good for you. But, I Get mean, out there. hard knocks will produce a bump in, in people's interest on certain players. So, Wilson ahead of Brown is probably going to be the norm. Unfortunately, we're back to the deucers now who took Tyreek Hill in the first round and have another selection ahead of Mike. I can't wait. I I can't wait either. Let's find out the pick. All right. Team deucers is going with Josh Jacobs here. We're going to take the chance. Josh Jacobs at 207. Mike, would that have have been a threat to you where you're picking? It would have been in in consideration for, uh, for my pick. Very disappointed that the bit only lasted one round. I mean, that's... Guys, that that's, being said, that's I'm disappointing. E- I am I am also disappointed. Equally thrilled, <laughs> uh, I, you know it's, it's 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 a real battle in my heart. Understandable. So I'm gonna uh, all the mock drafts that we have done. I don't know that I've gotten this player or not, but I he Josh Jacobs would have been in consideration for me. I do have him actually ranked a couple spots ahead of Tony Pollard, but. With everything going on for training camp, I mean, they're, the the risk of Josh Jacobs, to me, it will rise. We're still not 100% sure that Josh Jacobs is going to show up for week one. We just, I think he will, but we, we don't know as of the recording of this show. So I'm going to go with Tony Pollard, who the Dallas Cowboys, new starting running back. I have him uh, sitting right now as my running back six. Oh, I, I knew... When when you when you started talking running backs, I knew what happened in Andy's heart. He was so excited to have Devonta Adams fall all the way uh, to him. He wanted it so badly, and he did not get it. The word Jason saw into my soul. Not only <laughs> was that exactly accurate, however, I also said to myself, if he goes. I'll at least take Tony Pollard oh. <laughs> to go along with Christian McCaffrey. I feel like those are – I mean, I feel like it was two – You get nothing. It was two <laughs> tear breaks, in my opinion. Devontae Adams, I brought it up a couple shows ago. He's being stupidly underrated right now. Uh, in this draft, he is the wide receiver – what is that? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten off the board. That 
is going to prove really ridiculous in my opinion. And then Tony Pollard, look, the threat of another back showing up there, it doesn't seem like it's coming to fruition. Why would you when you have somebody like Deuce Vaughn in the backfield to help contribute with Tony Pollard? Um, you know, Zeke out meeting with other teams. Do you, so, Do you think that they look at Tony Pollard as a true workhorse because of Deuce Vaughn? Like they look and they're like, Tony Pollard is huge. He's just gigantic. You know, he looks like Derrick Henry. Now is that relative to relative to Deuce Vaughn? Like if they're standing in that room, they think they have different sized players. Yeah, they're as like as long as they don't stand next to other players. Exactly. No, I don't think that's what's oh. happening. Right. I think Deuce Vaughn's just really, really teeny, and everyone knows it. And he's going to hide behind the line, and no one's yeah. going to find him. They're they're definitely he's five five one seventy two. There you realize is an advantage, that? Yeah. like that it being that small, like he will disappear. I don't know if it's going to work, but could he run per, conceivably under his lineman's legs? Oh, like freeze tag? <laughs> like go, yeah, to, to release Like tunnel, tunnel tag? Going yeah, in. just go underneath. Maybe. I mean, he would have to army crawl. I don't know if he would. <laughs> just a dive. Or just like a limbo? Just a, just, <laughs> just, just a dive. Yeah, I just think he may be able to straight run through. There there are, I mean, the, the players have been talking about that. The players have been talking about how it is difficult to find him, to yeah. see him, and, and there is an advantage. Is there. It? I, I'm. Uh, he's one of my favorite last round um, picks right now in best ball. Genuine question, and probably not the kind that you say publicly, but is it offensive if I called him a hobbit? Mm. Would that I don't be? Know. It's a fantastical creature. And like I love people hobbits. love hobbits. I, I love do. I I would have to What's see the his, hairy feet. I'd situation? have to see his feet. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let me know. I want. How about this? I won't call him that, but if he emails me and asks me to, I will. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. So I am at the. Uh, at the edge here of the second round, I'll be picking quickly in the third. And um, to me, the the running back situation right now, just to lay it out there, I love Jameer Gibbs. I love the training yeah. camp reports that he's been uh, heavily involved in the passing game, and he doesn't leave the field. When Montgomery plays running back, Gibbs is staying on the field. That's one of the things coming out of camp. ETN, tons of passing game work. I think his upside is tremendous. Najee, I have a strict don't draft pro policy. Ramondre, I'm still skittish. Brees, skittish. So at wide receiver, I do see the value right now in drafting Almon Ross St. Brown. I think that is the next tier. I'm going to take him here and uh, see what happens in the next round. Brees went next. Josh Allen went after that. And I'm back on the clock. Yeah. So uh, Love Olave at wide receiver. Ramondre still on the clock. Third round. I think that's going to end up being my pick. Mike has them the highest of our group. I'm still a little afraid of what's heading their way, but I know that this offense, the identity, uh, Bill O'Brien coming in, I know Ramondre is going to play a big role there. And uh, I can afford a little bit of inconsistency at running back. Man, but would I take Gibbs? Mm. The last second, second guessing. <laughs> I would like to know how far apart these guys are. One moment, please. In your in your ranks? Yeah, I mean, they're, like for me, they're actually very far apart. But that's because well, Ramondre for, is very for you. They are, yeah. Ramondre, I have at, yeah, they're pretty far apart. Okay, we'll go with Ramondre. It's hard when you're in this position, by the way, and knowing you have to wait a million picks before your next one. But I'm going to take Ramondre to go with Amon Ra St. Brown, who Ooh. I wish was Devonte Adams. All right, after Ramondre. T. Higgins, Mark Andrews. We're going to talk about Higgins a little tomorrow. I'm just going to tease that. Uh, Mike has Cooper Cup and Tony Pollard so far. Hold on. I mean, this, I don't know that's super important. I don't, I don't have a breaking news button. Hit it for me. I got you. Breaking news. Uh, so speaking of the Cowboys and their running back situation, Cowboys running back Ronald Jones. This is a tweet coming out from Field Yates. Ronald Jones has been suspended for the first two games of the 2023 regular season. Hmm. I think – I don't know if he's going to be on the team. I don't think he is going to be on the team. That's interesting. So it – So the Do we know why? Uh, we're going to look into it and confirm what it is before uh, – Performance enhancing. Did you confirm it? Yeah. Okay. So – and you only two games? There, there's two types, so I think that that means uh, it's the obviously the lesser. Okay, I got you. Maybe so, he took performance reducing. 
Seems like it. I mean, is that a two game for the reducing <laughs> oh, kind? Oh man. Oh, we are <laughs> we are unkind today. Yeah. Uh yes. So so that is what happened. So Andy took Ramondre, who would have been in strong consideration for me, then Higgins, then Mark Andrews. Uh I was strongly considering Mark Andrews because I want to see what that build would actually look like taking Mark Andrews in the third, one of Jason's favorite third round picks. I have no disagreements. I thought about it at 302 just for the fun of it. I have no disagreements with it. Um, then it comes down to, you know, it's it's the, the, the rankings. Like I have my actual projections and there's, so there's some, some head versus heart here because I do have Keenan Allen ranked higher than Chris Olave, but when you're also when you're going for upside, we know who Keenan Allen is at this point, which I think is great. I think Keenan Allen's going to be fantastic, but if Chris Olave makes the jump that I am projecting, and all the the buzz out of New Orleans is is coming hot and heavy for Mister Olave, I'm going to take him there to pair him with Cooper Cup. Yeah, and he doesn't even need the buzz; he just needed last year's tape. Yes. Uh, the Deucer's back on the clock with Tyreek Hill and Josh Jacobs. It's your third round pick. Yeah, we're having a tough call here. We're yeah, you can't get Mark Andrews. We're thinking, <laughs> thinking. Okay, the pick is in, everybody. The pick, the pick is in. The pick is in. Okay, it's hard to find a quick consensus. I applaud you. Hopefully, it's a bad pick. Team Team Deucer's is going with Devonta Smith right here. Oh. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I um. I think that I like Devontae Smith more than T. Higgins, who went a few picks ahead. So over Keenan Allen, uh, I, I was shocked. Is Kyle running this team or Kyle, not? Yeah, Kyle must have left because to not <laughs> draft his guy Keenan Allen there, especially after you talk yeah. him up, you're like, I might draft him here. That's embarrassing, and I think he needs to get rid of the tattoo. Now, have you uh, you've you've seen the Quentin Johnston highlight reel that mm -hmm. is constant through Twitter right now? You still have yep. Mike Williams, um, Eckler. I is there a chance that it's just more distributed there? In, in absolutely, it's a chance. We're going to talk a little bit more about Keenan Allen tomorrow. I'll just tease that right there. Najee Harris Ooh. went after Devontae Smith, Travis Etienne, and Lamar Jackson. Jason's on the clock where he will be selecting. I will be selecting a running back. I was really hoping Najee would get to me. I know Andy and I disagree on what his value is, but he's just going to touch the ball so much. Where we don't disagree is believing that Jameer Gibbs is going to be great. So I will grab him instead at the end of the third round. Uh, so Gibbs to join Chubb and Diggs. Kenneth Walker next. Keenan next. Metcalf and Debo. Mm. Jason, you are back on the clock. One wide receiver, two running backs on your roster so far. Yeah, this is where it's a little tough for me. If I was a little bit further on, I would maybe look at, at Fields or Herbert. Um, right now, I feel like it's a little too early for them when there are other players that I uh, really like. And so I'm going to continue drafting players I think are great. Okay, that's a good strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. And I'm going to take... Terry McLaurin. Oh, to the shock of no one. No, no, I'm. I'm actually. Are you shocked? I am shocked. No, no, I, I, I am shocked. I like. I thought your three ten was going to be Joe Mixon, and then, and then you took Jameer Gibbs over Joe Mixon. I'm like, okay, I don't mind it. I, I get it. Let's go with the the guy who could catch seventy plus passes, and then Joe Mixon just comes right back for him. Like, oh my gosh, this Stephon Diggs. An ultimate high T three running backs here of Chubb, Gibbs, and Mixon. Like that's an unbelievable start. But you balked at it and you said, No, I'm getting I'm getting Terry McLaurin. I wanted balance. I wanted I wanted the two running backs, two wide receivers. I would have like I'm Joe Mixon's not not even like anywhere close to a player who I love to get on my teams. That would have been an easy smash. Okay. All he right. didn't do it. Yeah. Not with TMC sitting there <laughs> on the Mount Rushmore of Wide Fantasy receiver one. stars. Uh, Aaron Jones went after Terry McLaurin. Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, Deucers back on the clock. Unfortunately, Keenan Allen is gone, Kyle. Uh, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Smith, Josh Jacobs, and here you are. And this, Kyle, I am drafting a letter to the Keenan Allen fan club as we speak. You so will get your you're, you're membership getting revoked. revoked. Yeah. You'll have to send back all of those pins. <laughs> 
that you got? I, Send photos. Well, I think uh, Al and I might be bullying Kyle into this pick a little bit as well, and it's a bit of a reach. But now that the, I don't mind. The upside is is too great. We are taking Alexander Madison here at mm. the four oh seven. Alexander Madison at four oh seven ahead of Mike's <sighs> pick. I thought I had an easy pick. <laughs> I was just be like, Where are you going that direction? I was going to go, Alexander Madison, let's move it along. Um, I was going to at least bring up the discussion of of J.K. Dobbins and being it, – it's so frustrating. Uh, like heading into this season was really ready to have what I – I would have seen the J.K. Dobbins breakout, or I, should, I would project it. I, like, I, I thought he was going to be fantastic. And he's still on the pup. We don't know what's going on uh, fully. We are speculating that it, it is the contract situation. Uh, I still have him ranked pretty high. Jay, where? Because you you've been kind of with me on on uh, your your infatuation for J.K. Dobbins. Where are you sitting with him currently? Have you moved him in your rankings? Are you I've adjusting? Cooled, yeah, I've cooled on him a little bit. I still believe he is exceptionally talented, and I want pieces of the Ravens. I believe they're going to be a good offense that plays a little bit faster, scores more points this year, and has a healthy Lamar. But there's, you know, the fact that he's still dealing with some injuries uh, scares me. He's he's dealt with injuries. You know, that's the problem. It's like well, when he's on the field, it's he's August great. Now. Yeah, it's it's yeah. time for him to be out there. He's not out there. So I, I've, I've cooled. All right, then uh, I'll change it over to looking at the wide receiver position. You know, it's we got Mari Cooper, Hopkins, Drake London. Who I've, I'm actually, I am starting to rise on the prospects of Drake London. Matt Collins for life. Uh, <laughs> did, we haven't discussed. No, we haven't the the Matt Collins quotes. Here's the thing about Matt Matt Collins is that legitimately in his rookie season where he was with Philadelphia, he looked like a normal sized person to me. <laughs> And then he played in Miami, and we're like, "When did he get that big?" Yeah, and what it couldn't have been the same place Ronald Jones went. I mean, he is enormous now, year yes. over year he over gets year. Bigger. He gets bigger, like an eighth of his body gets, uh, like he gains an eighth of a size every year. And he, I don't know how this talking got started, but Matt Collins is now a wide receiver. He's on the Atlanta Falcons. Somehow, you want some quotes? Yeah. Oh, do you have them in front I of you? I do. Yes. Uh, I so don't, somehow food was brought up. I don't even like people who eat with utensils. <laughs> eat with your hands. That's what they're there for. I don't like them. <laughs> the best part is that's everybody. Yeah. Like so, which that means he doesn't like anyone. So, um, and then there's like a quote about soup. Yeah, he says when eating. Then he was the follow up yeah. is, hey, what about soup? What do you do? He says. You shouldn't be eating soup in the first place. <laughs> he also has pet snakes. He doesn't wear shoes. Oh, yeah. His quotes about feeling the ground with his feet. I mean, that is that's, it's a, just, that's a big boy. Hashtag never soup for dude, for Mac Collins. That Those dude. quotes are sensational. Yeah. So is it Mac Collins here, Mike? Uh, it is. It is not. <laughs> I mean, gosh, I really want it to be J.K. Dobbins. Uh why don't you show a little confidence in two legs? Yeah. All right, I'm doing it. It's J.K. Do like J.K. Dobbins and, and Madison are back to back in my rankings. I was going to let the fact that Madison is there, there, and Dobbins is not make the decision for me. But I think he's, I think he's such an incredibly talented player, and I believe in the Ravens' offense that if he is there, he will outperform his fourth round ADP. Well, that that's great. I'm glad you took him because DJ Moore went next, who I like. Amari Cooper in the fourth round, I like him there too. But this uh, this draft fell in a way where I get to draft the player that I'm really wanting to draft right now. It's Calvin Ridley. Ooh. Yeah, if, if Calvin Ridley was going to be the choice, had I not, you know, been caped up here for J.K. Yeah, Dobbs. Yeah, no, I'm thrilled to to combine, you know, McCaffrey and Stevenson with Amon Ra and Calvin Ridley. Uh, that is one pick that worked out. Kyle Pitts went next. I don't know if you saw the clip of Kyle Pitts once again yeah. beating his man and being horribly mistargeted by. <sighs> yeah. uh, I mean, it's a. We've seen it. It's the past and the future. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins goes at five hundred one. What do you think about that pick? We saw a uh, training camp video of Mr. Hopkins. Yeah, I I've really had a hard time with Hopkins. Uh, I every time that I'm in a draft and I see him and I'm near ADP. 
I just pinball back and forth. I'm like, oh, he's gonna, he's definitely, he's going as like it's the DeAndre wide receiver Hopkins. twenty. Yeah. He's, he's the wide receiver one there. He's gonna be great. And then I'm like, ah, he's old. AJ, he's on AJ a Brown was great teams. there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say this. I, uh, it's not so much for Hopkins value, but uh, the Titans. The, I think they're gonna be much better than people think. Yeah, I mean, not me and Mike, of course, because yeah. we picked them to win the division. Yes. But yes. other people. The world at large. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, this is good because I went Ridley, hoping that Miles Sanders would come back around. Miles Sanders at the top of the fifth. Thank you very much. I'm going to select you. So, Miles Sanders joining the squad. Uh, Could have gone with a quarterback there. I know we all like Justin Herbert. Could have gone with an upside uh, a Fields or Lawrence. But right now, I am stacking talent. Mike, you're back on the clock. Hawkinson and Damian Pierce went next. You have Cooper Cup and Olave at wideout, Pollard and Dobbins at running back. Yes, I am perfectly balanced. Uh, the tight end position is of no interest to me right now. Quarterback is pretty interesting. Getting Justin Fields here at the 5.5, I, I think that's that's okay. It's still, you know, I, I still don't love getting these quarterbacks that early. I guess just... Maybe years and years and years of that not being an optimal strategy. But in the fifth to get Justin Fields, who Justin Fields can can be the quarterback one if the passing actually improves this year with DJ Moore. And then at the running back position, we're looking at Cam Akers, James Conner. That kind of seems to be like a an off-season long decision of is it mm-hmm. Cam Akers or is it James Conner? Um, but I, I mentioned – that I am rising a bit on uh, on Drake London, second-year wide receiver uh, from the Atlanta Falcons. We just made fun of what happened with Kyle Pitts, and I do I understand that is a risk for the Atlanta Falcons that the quarterbacking doesn't get better, or they just they just run because they can. Yeah, with, with Tyler Algier and and uh, absolutely. Dijon. But it's the same as it, it's the same as like DeAndre Hopkins. Like I'm not saying yeah. Drake London is DeAndre Hopkins at this point, but he's there Drake, will be third downs. But Drake London is a an excellent wide receiver. He underperformed at the touchdown area last year. Should he have, you know, scored the expected amount of touchdowns? Like he he would have had a perfectly uh, like a really strong rookie campaign. Obviously, much stronger. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go with Drake London. I'm going to see what this team is like with two second year wide receivers. The Deucers back on the clock after their reach for Madison. Uh, by one spot, by the way. By one spot. Uh, Tyreek Hill, Josh Jacobs, Devontae Smith. Also, how dare you? Alex Madison. I, like, I, gl- I glanced over this. How dare you call Alexander Madison a reach in the middle of the fourth round? That's nonsense. Who, who are you yelling at? I'm yelling, are you at, yelling no, at me? I'm yelling at the deucers. Oh, okay. Because they said it's a little mm. bit of a reach. It isn't yeah. by ADP, but by time drafts come around, you're probably right. He's going to be right around there. Or, high, or higher. Yes, Give me White. Miles Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Deucers, you're on the clock. All right, we are taking Justin Field. I'm sorry, Justin Herbert. Yeah. Oh, 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 wrong Justin. Ah! Rope dope. <laughs> so here's where we're at. Jason just cried out like a, like wounded, a banshee. wounded animal. Uh, Justin Herbert and Justin Fields went back to back. So Herbert to the Deucers. Fields went next. Jason and I both have Herbert one spot ahead of Fields. Mike has Fields one spot ahead of Herbert, then went back to back. Kittle Kyle, at five oh eight. You don't you, you like this isn't redemption for passing on Keenan Allen by taking his quarterback over Justin Fields. Just letting you know. Uh, Kittle, Godwin, and Jason on the clock. Was your were you crying out because you wanted a quarterback? Like he wanted yes, Herbert. I wanted uh, I wanted Herbert or Fields, but I really wanted. This is where I say when, when you're at the the one ten, where I'm drafting from. The beginning of the fourth is too early because sometimes they can make it all the way back to you in the fifth, um, and. When I was looking at the board, I realized team eight, team nine, they already have quarterbacks. So when you didn't select fields, I knew that I get one of those two so yeah. long as so long as the deucers don't take a quarterback. But they did. I was upset. And now I'm looking at running back. And it, it, it's the conversation that Mike said earlier. Akers, is it Connor? Is it Cam Akers or is it James Connor? Um, you, you go back and forth. I could make narrations for each one being the better player I want to go for upside this is my running back three who do I think could really be more special and I I believe that Cam Akers being a younger player who could be on the better offense if he is given the role that we saw him have 
as just a complete dominant like he the backfield touches towards the end of last year were sure. crazy then he should be able to have a really really solid season all right, Jerry Judy at 5'11". I think that's a good pick there. Went right after Cam Akers, Christian Watson, James Conner, and DeAndre Swift rounding out uh, those uh, the fifth round and early sixth round before Jason is back on the clock. I am back on the clock, and now I'm looking at uh, a couple of wide receivers. I love Mike Williams. I love Marquise Hollywood-Brown here. Um, and, you know, I draft Tyler Lockett everywhere. I think there are three really, really good options. So when I'm considering how do I tie break here I'm looking at what do I have I've got Diggs and I've got McLaurin already on my roster Diggs is going to be a consistent force McLaurin will probably be a little bit more hit and miss I feel like I want more targets more consistency more volume and I think Hollywood Brown will have that throughout the season he'll be better when Kyler is back we don't know exactly when that's going to be whether it's week one week four um, but he, he'll come back, and in the meantime, even when Kyler's not there, he's going to be getting 10 targets a game. He'll be consistent, and getting a guy like that in the sixth round, I'm happy with Hollywood. Michael Pittman, Dalvin Cook, Mike Williams went next. Deucer's back on the clock with Mike right after him. All right, Deucer's are going with Brandon Ayuk in the sixth round. Brandon Ayuk in the sixth. I always like to see where him and Debo go. Debo was the second pick of the fourth round. Ayuk, the seventh pick of the sixth round. I think both those players are having huge years. Mike, you're on the clock. Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett. Well, that's yeah, unfortunate what, <laughs> what just happened. Lockett off the board, Christian Kirk, and then the pick I was going to make was Trevor Lawrence. For the stack. For the stack with Calvin Ridley, which is not going to happen because he went right before me. So that's cool. Uh, we have got. I've got a couple players that I am looking at here. I'm going to take my quarterback. Uh, there are – it was Lawrence and Tua, and then I feel like a big potential uh, tier, uh, tier break. So I'll take Tua here because the, the actual player I'm going to gamble on is a tight end named Darren Waller, who I'd like to take with my next pick. Uh, team one has Kyle Pitts already, so I'm going to take Tua here. They also have a quarterback, so works yeah, both ways. Fine. but. I'm going to take Tua. They took Traylon Burks, and they took Javante Williams. And we're going to come Which, back around. How much Javante stuff have we – like, I'm losing track of the days. Did we did we talk about that Javante Williams was – they said he's cleared for contact – or that he said he's cleared for contact? Uh, I know that we discussed on the show the fact that he didn't go on the pup and the importance of that. Yeah. Um, I, I think it, we did not mention the specificity of cleared for contact, which is – that's really, a big really deal. impressive. All right, I'm actually not taking Darren Waller here. Oh. There, there are a couple of tight ends I like. Five tight ends off the board, and I'm willing to figure it out later because I like the value, once again, in the seventh round of a player I'm going to talk about a lot this offseason. Mike Evans in the seventh round of this draft. Uh, Mike Evans is the second pick of the seventh round. Godwin was the ninth pick of the fifth round. Both guys undervalued in this draft, in my opinion. Rashad White, his teammate, goes next. Dotson. Mike, were you – was that a sound? It was Rashad White. Okay, so Rashad White went off the board. You've taken Drake London and Tyler Lockett the last two rounds. You are back on the clock. So the the running backs are – I'm with you, Andy, that, that Darren Waller is, is rising up my projections. I'm starting to get very excited for what he could do as the true number one uh, – the number one target for Daniel Jones. All the We're making all these the, – the hullabaloo of – who is well? Who's the wide receiver? And they have fifteen slot wide receivers. And like, it, I think it might just be Darren Waller. They they traded for him. We saw what happened with uh, uh, Bellinger. I can't think of his first name. Daniel. Uh, Daniel Bellinger, uh, who was a rookie, and, and not that he had a prolific year, but it was a rookie tight end was productive. Was yeah, overproductive for what he should have been. So I'm I'm very into Darren Waller. But the running backs are starting to get to a kind of a scary point here uh montgomery is very interesting as is my former champion who may be making a, maybe he's back to my champion uh and i don't think he'll make it back to me but this is definitely a an adp stretch but i'm going to take antonio gibson all right mike gets his guy antonio or our guy antonio gibson <laughs> brooks the deucers are back on the board you took iuk last round the deucers are going with david montgomery at running back yeah the uh 
That's he, fair. He was one of the great running backs still left on the board. Kamara went next. Uh, look, for whatever you want to say about Kamara's career uh, decline, yeah. the late seventh round is wild. Uh, Deontay Johnson, Dallas Goddard, who uh, is the another tight end Another tight end I rank very highly. Jason, you're on the clock. Yeah, so um, when I look at quarterback, there, there's kind of the, the top seven guys, and then after that, I punt. So there's – there's really only one quarterback afterwards where I'm considering, and that was Tua, and he took him. So that's not in consideration. I've got three running backs, three wide receivers. So I'm going to go look at tight end, see is there someone that stands out there. And to me, there's, uh, you know, Darren Waller I know is is the highest in ADP. My highest ranked would be Pat Fryermuth. Uh, you know, t once you're past those, you know, Mark Andrews, Maybe a, if if Pitts falls, I just would rather take Dulcich late or something like that. So now I'm saying, okay, I'm balanced. I can go wide receiver. I can go running back. And there's a wide receiver that I, I have not drafted yet. I haven't drafted because early on he was being drafted too high. He was being drafted ahead of Tyler Lockett. But I really yeah. do love the yeah. talent of Jackson Smith and Jigba. He's great he's a phenomenal wide receiver he's been making waves at camp and they don't uh, have any running backs anymore <laughs> right and a quarterback that I might grab later it could be Gino so um I I like uh adding him here and now it has come back to me Dak Pacheco AJ Dillon and Darren Waller oh, finally off the board um, Waller would not have made it past me if had he made it, made it to me in the eighth yeah it's slightly comforting Mike thanks so I have three running backs with Gibbs, Akers, and Chubb. I'm questioning, can I just be good with that? Or will I need more players later? Because what I would like to do here is go with another rookie wide receiver. I was very close to doing this uh, with my last pick, but I hadn't drafted JSN. I'm going to add Jordan Addison to the roster. And so my, my wide receivers, I think, are – I've got some high upside after knowing that Diggs is locking down my wide receiver one. One of the best things I've ever done in fantasy was go all in on rookie wide receivers last year in our league of record draft. I was depleted picks-wise, and I went – I think I drafted four or five. It was Olave. It was Garrett Wilson. It was Traylon Burks um, and, and a couple others. And it proved so valuable for trade capital – and for my team having some productivity because they mm -hmm. do make an impact quick. Like if Jackson Smith and Jigba comes out and dominates in week one, that will not be shocking to me. All right, Kadarius, Tony, Quentin Johnson, another rookie, George Pickens, Deucers, and Mike next up. All right, we were hoping uh, Johnson got back for the, the stack, but he didn't, so we are going with Rashad Penny here. That'll probably make Mike upset. I mean, I'm just I'm glad someone else – Got to do it. So for when once. they play you this year, and Rashad Penny and Madison are going up against you, how will that feel? Uh, it will feel terrifying because they're both going to be great. Okay. okay. Uh, but the I actually would not have taken Rashad Penny here. Uh, I've waited on this wide receiver as long as I possibly could. I am taking Brandon Cooks of the Dallas Cowboys. Just a reminder: they traded to get Brandon Cooks. They desperately needed a number two. I know Michael Gallup's another year recovered from his from his ACL, and he still has that contract. But Brandon Cooks, to me, still looks like a receiver who has it. I think Dak is a good quarterback. And if he is helping stretch the field here with CeeDee Lamb, I think that Brandon Cooks is going to have a just another Brandon Cooks type of season where he's excellent for fantasy. Well, I've been sniped again. James Cook was the target at 8-11. He goes at 8-09. Zach Charbonnet off the board right before me. Um, I am, I'm going to turn to the starting running back for the Washington Commanders. I'm going to take Brian Robinson. Oh. He's the least sexy pick. Yeah. But even when you listen to Gibson, Gibson comes out and talks about how he's in the J.D. McKissick role. Like there is an early down role in Washington, and uh, Brian Robinson was pretty good to end the year. And some, some games, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was over four carry from, the la from week eight on, I think it was. And I think there's going to be value there. And running backs, when you have injuries happen, all of a sudden you're saying, wow, I wish I had more of them. I'm going to take him there. And then uh, looking at wide receiver, I'm going to shoot a shot at a rookie in Zay Flowers. Yeah, that's a great pick. Mm -hmm. All right. 
I am watching Cortland Sutton and Deshaun Watson go off the board. Mike, you are on the clock. You and Jason, neither of you have a quarterback yet. Neither of you have a tight end yet. Three picks left. That is a good reminder. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I, st I have my pick all queued up. I don't know how much it will impact the entirety of Team Deucers, but I know that one of them is going to groan. I will take the starting running back for the Chicago Bears. Mm. I will draft Khalil Herbert. Nice pick, oh, I thought Mike. it was Roshan. It, you, it's take not. that, Brooks. It's, it's not Roshan. All right, Brooks, you're back on the clock. The Deucers with another pick here. All right, Team Deucers is going with Gabe the Babe. <laughs> what? Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis. Oh. Babe Davis. All right, Evan Ingram, Pat Fryermuth <laughs> off the board. Gabe the Babe. Not Gabe the Babe. Sure how I, I feel about that. Uh, I mean, if he performs, I feel better. Yeah, yeah. He has some Babe weeks, but he's like the uh, the Seinfeld episode, the girl that Jerry dated. That like in some sometimes when you look at him, she's really beautiful, and then in the wrong light, he's mm. like you know she keeps changing. That's sometimes Gabe. he's a babe. All right. He does have babe games. I mean, he's got babe games. He's his that playoff game was was incredible. Yeah. Uh, um all right, so I am on the clock now. I've got uh a lot of wide receivers, three running backs, still need a tight end and a quarterback. This round I was eyeing Voldemort um and uh Pat Fryermuth. Both of them went and to me the the gap between, you know, the 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 next players available and where I can draft them in ADP says Let's get a running back on my roster. And since I have been loading up on rookies, why change that now? I'm going to take a player I believe in against my normal belief on small running backs. Uh, and there's been conversation and you going, discussion. You're the deuce deuce? I am going Devon A-Chain. Oh. Uh, Boo. <laughs> you thought I would go Deuce I McAllister to, over A-Chain? McAllister? Or, oh, yeah. oh, man. Wow. Yes. Deuce McAllister. I apologize, everybody. You've seen that Dell commercial lately? <laughs> <laughs> the Deuce Caboose. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I would, uh, Devon A-Chain is a much better pick than, than Deuce Vaughn. Well, not when Dalvin Cook signs there. Well, Dalvin Cook's not there as of this recording. So I, I still think Devon A-Chain – will have a really good uh, role, and they didn't spend a day two pick to not give him a lot of work, and he won't need much. Um, at this and point... I don't know. I mean, we have uh, Mike McDaniels. He's right out of that Kyle Shanahan tree, and we know what Kyle Shanahan loves more than anything. It's taking a third-round running back and never playing them ever. That is true. That <laughs> is absolutely true. He could be your, Trace, could be your Trey Sermon this yeah, year. Yeah, that is, that, is, that is scary, but this isn't Shanahan. He's just from the tree. Yeah. We'll see how far that apple falls. Um, All right. So now I'm looking, and I've, I've gone three rookies in a row, and I need a tight end, and sitting there is Dalton Kincaid, and I will never, <laughs> I will never do that. I don't draft rookie tight ends. It's against who I am. So I am grabbing Greg Dulcich, uh, and uh, I think he's going to have a very good uh, sophomore season. All right, the Deucer's back on the clock after Richardson and Jamal Williams, Damian Harris. Who's the pick? All right, we're going to grab our tight end here and take Chig. Chig okay. Conquo, not scared off by Hopkins' arrival. Mike, you were on the clock. Your last two picks, got to get a quarterback, got to get a tight end. I am happy that Jason let Geno Smith pass to me. Because I will take the Geno Tyler Lockett stack. All right, Geno Smith, who looks like he's going to have to do even more right now with the injuries at running back. Uh, Elijah Mitchell, Rashad Bateman. Um, I am eyeballing Dalton Kincaid, but I think I can take him with my final pick in this draft. So I will take Sky Moore in the 10th round okay. and come around and grab Dalton Kincaid, my tight end, with the final pick of the draft. Uh, the camp reports on Dalton Kincaid, which, you know, look, rookie tight ends are good at camp. That's when they get a lot of articles written about him. But he has been with the first team exclusively. He's been making big plays, and uh, they're going to need him. So Daniel Jones goes next, Jacoby and Myers, and then, Mike, your final pick, a tight end, please. Yeah, uh, I, I know who I have to pick here. Uh, I don't love it considering I have Cooper Cup on my team, uh, but Tyler Higby – is just he's going to be usable. He won't be electric, but you 
shouldn't have too many weeks where you're like, oh, just getting a zero. Up there, there are he's a tight end. Yes. Yeah, the, there are how many tight ends in the NFL that you can realistically say have a hundred targets coming this year? Like very four. Few. There's not, and, and Higby is probably one of them. Like it's it's rare. He's just not very good. He's, he's fine. Yeah, he's fine. He's very fine. Yeah. I, I have a lot who, of Higby. Who scores more fantasy points in that offense? If you if you replace Dalton Schultz and Tyler Higby, which one scores more in the exact same offense? Dalton Schultz. Okay. Uh, I would say they score the exact I same. I would say they score fair. exactly the same. Yeah. All right. It's time for the Deucers to complete this draft. Do you have a special pick for your final pick? We do. Our final pick, we're going with Tank Bigsby. All right. Oh. Tank Bigsby. Not Tank Dell? Tank, Not Tank Dell. Tank no. Bigsby, Jacksonville no. Jaguars, rookie running back. Yeah, I wouldn't bring up Tank Dell's name. That's <laughs> weird. Who would do that? Adam Thielen, Jerick McKinnon, Cole Komet. McKinnon's a good target late in drafts. Jason, you're back on the clock. Uh, who's your latest late, 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 late quarterback? Well, my latest late, late, late quarterback is Matthew Stafford. He was my um, he was my backup plan should they continue drafting all these teams to quarterbacks, which – uh, happened but Aaron Rodgers fell to me and I think getting him with my last pick having him you know with uh Garrett Wilson and company he he could still do something special he is my target if I'm punting the position for sure I think the upside there is tremendous all right I'm gonna read you my final roster we'll go around and do that uh I'll give you the deucers as well but McCaffrey Stevenson Miles Sanders and Brian Robinson as my running backs Alan Ross, St. Brown, Calvin Ridley, Mike Evans, A. Flowers, Sky Moore at wide receiver. Tua is my quarterback. Dalton Kincaid is my tight end. At wide receiver, I have Cooper Cup, Chris Olave, Drake London, Tyler Lockett, and Brandon Cooks. My running backs are Tony Pollard, J.K. Dobbins, uh, Antonio Gibson, Khalil Herbert, then Geno Smith, uh, former quarterback five, is there as my, as my quarterback. <laughs> you have to say to, it. To stack with, with Tyler Lockett. And then Tyler Higby at tight end. Uh, I've got Aaron Rodgers and Greg Dulcich in my onesie positions. At wide receiver, I've got Stephon Diggs, Terry McLaurin, Marquise Brown, JSN, Jordan Addison, a couple of rookies. And at running back, I've got Nicholas Chubb, Jameer Gibbs, Cam Akers, and Devon A. Chain. Brooks, why don't you go ahead and give us the Deucers team? Do you mind? I don't mind. Uh, team Deucers, we went, we have Tyreek Hill. What's Devon the hashtag, by the way? Hashtag Team Deucers. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's on the nose. All right. And we have Tyreek Hill, Devonta Smith, Brandon Ayuk, and Gabe Davis at wide receiver. Uh, Josh Jacobs, Alexander Madison, David Montgomery, and Rashad Penny, and Tank Bigsby at running back. Jo Justin Herbert at quarterback. And Chick at tight end. Maka laka ding dong. All right, you can weigh in. I mean, I I think we've got uh, we've got the panda bears over there. Oh, we it, know the, where the votes are going. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. But guess what, guys? Yeah, we have another show tomorrow. Wow, ice and fire. Ooh. That's a good show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Ranking shows coming up as well. See you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.